In the wake of a natural disaster, we naturally focus on the destruction above ground. This includes tending to the injured, calculating the amount of destruction, and counting the number missing or dead. Depending on the size of the storm, local or global relief organizations such as FEMA or the Red Cross send aid to those affected. After a storm, once the affected areas begin to rebuild, one essential community is still forgotten. This video will highlight the impact that natural disasters have on marine life. The devastation begins much sooner beneath the ocean surface than it does for humans in the case of a natural disaster. When a storm passes over the ocean, the cooler, deeper layers mix with the warm surface water disrupting the ecosystem. The saline in the water can also be tempered within shallow coastal areas when rainwater cools the surface of the ocean. Hurricanes can also cause wetlands and freshwater areas to be infiltrated by large storm surges that pile salt water on shore. This can cause a disruption to creatures and vege vegetation that cannot thrive in the foreign salt water mixture. Along with the temperature, the geology of the ocean can be disrupted by large violent waves moving tons of sand that lie on seabeds. Sand from the disrupted sea floor can cover, smother, and destroy coral reefs and other forms of marine life. A water surge from a hurricane, for example, can disrupt a sea turtle's nest by submerging the eggs and killing or greatly harming the unhatched sea turtles. As evidenced by the 2011 tsunami that hit Japan, the recovery of an ecosystem is a very unique process. Smaller life, like that of small fish, tend to recover quickly and thrive following an event like a tsunami. They have short reproduction cycles, so they are capable of repopulating an ecosystem quickly. Without larger predators, these smaller forms of marine life can grow and have an abundance of food from food brought out to sea from land following the tsunami. The system starts to balance out when larger fish and other predators repopulate the area as well. There was also evidence of foreign forms in this recovering ecosystem. Marine life that could typically be found in warmer climates were found in colder climate waters due to the mixing of ocean temperatures mentioned earlier. The varied species of marine life will stay in their undesignated areas until the temperatures stabilize from a natural disaster. Sea creatures can also displace from their usual environments and climates. This has the ability to disrupt the ecosystems of the environments they have assimilated and adapted to after being carried across the sea. However, Large animals, like that of sharks, whales, and dolphins, are not as commonly caught by storms and other disasters because of a distinct trait that acts as an early warning system. Sharks and dolphins are commonly not caught in hurricanes because they have the ability to detect barometric changes which lets them know when a storm is approaching. They will leave the area that is in the path of the storm and return once it is safe again. In fact, Scientists are currently developing a new early warning system for tsunamis by placing sensors deep underwater, which was inspired by the barometric detector in dolphins. It has been reported by the National Wildlife Federation that while many large mammals appear to have the ability to sense the brewing of a storm like a hurricane, they cannot always get out of harm's way. There have been cases of marine life like manatees and dolphins taken ashore by storms, a species that has been on a steady population decline since the 1950s. Hurricane Katrina, which devastated New Orleans, Louisiana in 2005, left many injured dolphins in her wake as well. A single hurricane can have the strength to kill millions of fish at a time, and since there are an average of 10 hurricanes per year, the fish population is constantly in peril. Interestingly, some animals have adapted to these fierce storms. While these storms can affect wildlife like birds by knocking them off course while flying, seabirds and waterfowl are specifically designed for storms like this by doing things like holding onto perches with intense claw strength, allowing them to withstand the strong winds of a hurricane. Natural disasters like volcanic eruptions also have an interesting effect on marine life. Volcanic eruptions have several aftermaths in their wake. They disrupt the ecosystem with high temperature changes, salinity, fluctuating oxygen levels, and increased acidity levels. This leads to an unusually high population of dead fish left over due to the fatal changes in their ecosystem. However, creatures such as phytoplankton are capable of adapting to these changes and surviving because they sit at the bottom of the ocean floor. Currently, there is no organization dedicated to saving and rebuilding marine life after a natural disaster, but the ocean is a very important part of the world. The most closely re related is the International Fund for Animal Welfare, 
which globally dispatches emergency response teams to areas where animals are in harm. This includes all natural disasters from fires to floods to even severe storms like hurricanes, earthquakes, tsunamis, and volcanic eruptions. Although this is a great first step, it excludes all marine life, which this video has shown is greatly affected by natural disasters as well. Marine life is a very important part of our ecosystem, much more than we even realize. They also feel the aftermath of natural disasters just like we do, but they do not yet have the same relief efforts. While human relief efforts should remain the priority, we can all call this planet home, and we should consider giving more effort into aiding our oceans and the beings that live there following natural disasters.